or what? Actually, I see a lot of heroes in this room. I see a few of my personal heroes. Floyd, I see you over there. I see so many members of my team who have worked so hard over the last 10, 11 months to make sure that we are running a great campaign for the people of this great state. Thank you for being heroes. I see, how many of you are door knockers the last couple months through 115 degree heat? Wait, raise your hand if you've been a door knocker. Okay, those are the, honestly, those are the real heroes because it's about 115 degrees and they've been knocking on 900 doors every single day. I love you guys, thank you so much. I see our donors, people who reached deep into their pockets, some pulled $20 out and that was difficult because let's face it, we're living in Bidenomics and it's not working out very well. And then there's people who pulled a lot more than that out, and I appreciate every one of you. You truly are American heroes. And I'm gonna go real personal here with my favorite heroes, which is my husband, Jeff. I just saw him disappear somewhere. He's my, uh, there he is, right here. Say hi to Jeff. He's awesome. I've met him in Arizona, I married him in Arizona, and um, little did he know, he know that we would be on this wild ride. And he's been not only, uh, he gets me around, he drives me, he protects me, this guy will protect me, this guy will protect me. If anybody wants to hurt me, he will protect me. And um, he's my confidant, he, he's happy to sit in silence with me. We've all had those long days where we just wanna sit silently with someone, and I love you so much, Jeff. Thank you. And then my kids, you just saw my firstborn, Ruby. How awesome is Ruby? And you're gonna meet my son, Leo, in a little bit. He's incredible as well, just so blessed. There's so many heroes, but I think we all share one common hero, and I think I'm safe to say that we think of our favorite president, Donald J. Trump, as a hero, right? Absolutely. Somebody said Trump, Trump, Trump. I agree. Trump, Trump. Fight, fight. That's right. You got to fight for this country. Uh, really, to be honest, I want to thank my friend, President Donald J. Trump. I want to thank him for not only his endorsement, that means a lot to me, but I want to thank him more, for more than that his support, his advice his friendship and his strength. That guy is bulletproof. He's literally bulletproof, guys. Trump is bulletproof. He's got God. Who said that? He's got God. We've got God. We've got God. Somebody said to me the other day, God saved President Trump. And I said, you know what? I think God saved us when you say President Trump. I really do believe that. So we all love you, President Trump, and I want to thank him. But you know what? He can't do it alone. It's not about one man. It really isn't. He can't do this alone. He needs backup in Washington, D.C. <laughs> he needs backup in Washington, D.C., and I'm going to be his backup. If you're, way, if you're awake, and I know President Trump, he's probably awake and he's probably watching, hopefully not the fake news. President Trump, I've got your six. I've got it. Arizona, I stand before you today to officially accept your nomination as the Republican candidate for the United States Senate from the great state of Arizona.
Now, I, I really, I want to thank my opponent, Sheriff Mark Lamb. Actually, I hate, to, I hate to call him my opponent. He's my friend. He's my friend. Mark Lamb is my friend. Both. He's great. You're right. Thank you. Mark Lamb is fantastic. Um, both Mark and, and Janelle are my friends. I, I, I think of his family as friends. And he's a member of law enforcement. Every day he goes out there and puts it all on the line. Amen. We appreciate you, Mark. He ran a great campaign based on, uh, in, in, we never hit below the belt, which is so rare in politics. I'll never forget when we did our debate on May 23rd. Yes, we did, by the way, the media lies. We did a debate on May 23rd. Uh, yeah, you're all going, wait a minute. Yeah, the media lies. And we, when we were doing this debate, I thought, wow, he had an opportunity to, just, to really hit below the belt, to really go dark and deep. And he didn't do it. And I thought, that is a great man. That is a man of great character. We stuck to the issues. We talked about the issues, what was important. And I really want to thank Mark. Mark, I know that we're going to be working together in the future. We, I know we both want to save America, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you, Mark. I also want to thank, um, I want to thank the people who voted for me. I'm pretty sure everybody in this room did. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I actually had a friend who I thought was liberal who texted me this morning and said, I voted for you. And um, I want to be there tonight, but I don't like crowds. So good luck. And it tells you that the tide is changing right now. So exciting. So exciting. So thank you, everyone who voted for me. Thank you for um, my friends who said all 16 members of my family voted for you today. I thank you for that. I thank you if, if I'm the first Republican you voted for. I thank you if I'm the 50th Republican you voted for. And I also want to uh, talk to the people who didn't vote for, for me and invite you to join in this amazing America First movement. We invite everybody in, right? Because it's going to take each and every one of us at this moment. We've got to come together, people. You know that. I don't need to tell you. How, don't start singing. Someone's about ready to start doing a music video over here. We gotta come together as Americans. We have watched what has happened over the last three and a half years, and frankly, we only have three and a half months to save this country. Who is ready to save this country? This is an all hands on deck moment, okay? All hands on deck. It's gonna take people from all walks of life. It's gonna take Trump Republicans. I think we got a room full of them here. It's going to take traditional Republic, Republicans. I think we got a few, how many traditional Republicans? Great, we love you. It's going to take conservatives, independents, libertarians, even some disaffected Democrats. How, how many former Democrats, how many people in here have voted Democrat at least once in their life? There we go. We got a few of them in here. Honestly, I, I, don't, I don't care if you're 18. <laughs> Wait a minute. We're, this, that started a conversation, by the way. Somebody said, I didn't know you voted Democrat before. That's okay. It was 10 and a half million Obama voters who gave us President Donald J. Trump in 2016. We love you, dude. I don't care if you're 18 years old and you are just graduated from high school, or if you're 81 and you're trying to enjoy your golden years. If you're married, if you're single, if you're gay, if you're straight, if you're proud, if you're white, if you love this country, Welcome to the America First Movement. We love you. I'm going to be really honest because um, as Reverend Maupin talked about, I've been covering this state for a long time. I know, I, I know you think I'm 29. I've been around a lot longer than that. I covered this state for 27 years, and I, I, I feel like I know the people so well. I always joked I had an intimate relationship with the people. And I say that because I did the evening news and I would be stopped when I was at the grocery store on the street and people would say, my husband and I were in bed last night watching the news, watching you. 
And I said, I feel like I have an intimate relationship with you. So I have an intimate relationship with the people of Arizona, and I have a feeling we get, we have a lot more in common than people think. You know, we agree on far more than we disagree on. And we've got to move past the disagreements and focus on what unites us so we can start accomplishing something for this country. You guys okay with that? I love you. I love you. Thank you. In the Republican Party, we, we do have our differences because we like to debate, right? But I think we agree on 95% of everything. I really do, and, and even, I think we agree with our Democrat friends on maybe 80%, possibly. Let me tell you this, I know some Democrats, okay? And the Democrats I know want a secure border. And they really do. The Arizonans I know want a secure border. The Arizonans I know, whether they're Republican or Democrat, they want a great education for their kiddos. We pour a lot of money into our education. We want to get a great result. They want safe streets. They want safe neighborhoods. They want to know that if they want to go for a bike ride or have the kids play in the front yard, they're going to be safe. They want to know that they're going to be safe. The Arizonans I know don't want war and poverty. They want peace and prosperity, right? Peace. And we got that with President Trump, by the way. So if you think this is a battle between Democrats and Republicans, you're still sleeping. This is not a battle between Democrats and Republicans. That means you've been listening to the fake news too long. This is uh, not a battle between Democrats and Republicans. This is a battle between good and evil. This is a battle between the people who want to destroy this country and the people who want to save America. Our country's at a crossroads. The challenges we face are not Democrat-Republican challenges. The party is, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're the pizza party, the pool party, the Democrat party, or the Republican party. Do you love this country and want to save this great nation for our future? That's where we are. Now, the path that my opponent, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's favorite congressman, Ruben Gallego, true. It's very extreme. My opponent, Ruben Gallego, is an extreme liberal Democrat from Chicago who was handpicked to move to Arizona and try to turn this amazing state into a socialist state. Ruben, we don't want that. We don't want that. Actually, I was shocked at, I was shocked at uh, the votes he had made. And, you know, I'm going to let you in on something because you all know that I'm new to politics. I'm not a, I'm not a politico. And that, thank you. That's why we love you, she said. Thank you. There's a thing called opposition research. Have you heard about that? Yeah. It's basically when you, you go all the history of, of somebody in politics. You look at their voting record, the things they've done. You know, most people in politics have a record about this big, and that's not good. I have a one-page record. There's nothing on it. You would not believe what Ruben Gallego, after 10 years in the Congress, what his research folder looks like. Do we have that somewhere? Bring that out. This is, this is 10 years of being in Congress. Oh my God. I, let me see. If, hold up. Let me see if I can lift this. Let me just take one. Hold up. Okay. This is Ruben's destructive voting record that is destroying Arizona. Right here. I was shocked when I saw it. The people who do this research said they have never, ever, in the whole history of doing research on some really seedy characters back in D.C., they've never seen someone with such a disgusting record. He votes with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris 100% of the time. <laughs> Ruben, you're fired. That's right. I, I, I mean... Retire. Uh, let me just flip through some of this, guys. First of all, he voted for legislation which brought us the highest inflation that we've seen in 40 years. That's why we can't afford anything. That's why my daughter said her generation is worried that they're never going to be able to have the American dream. We've priced a generation of people out of the American dream. 
That's why the retirees in Arizona are worried that their golden years are not going to be very golden. They're struggling to put food on the table. I want to bring back the Trump economy, and we will. Oh, this is a beauty. This is a beauty. Ruben Gallego wants to defund the police. Can you? What? He actually, it says right here, he marched in defund the police rallies while our cities were burning back in 2020. He marched in defund the police rallies and he wanted to actually get rid of uh, the filibuster to pass the George Floyd legislation, which would have defunded the police nationwide. Says this is crazy stuff. Wanted to end the filibuster. I got to give kudos to Senator Kirsten Cinema for saving the filibuster. That's her legacy, truly. <laughs> truly. She protected that filibuster, and I can promise you this I will fight to protect Cinema's legacy, the filibuster. And I will always protect the police, law enforcement. I want to fully fund our police and make our streets safe. Thank you. Ruben supports men in women's sports. This is just, this is lunacy. Men's showering with our, with our daughters in a locker room. I don't know, I, don't, I have a feeling if a, man, if a man were to show up into a locker room with any of your daughters, it's not gonna go very well for that guy, right? No. And, and even, even after, even after Gallego, like I said, he is the favorite congressman for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Even after they promised they wouldn't touch Medicare, the last two years, Kamala and Rubin have cut Medicare. The last two years. The media is not going to report that. Let me tell you that. If they're going to cut Medicare, they're going to cut Social Security, and we're not going to let them do that. I will tell you. Take a look at that. Take a look, I, I gotta move this thing, it's too heavy, it's too heavy. <laughs> Take it, it's too depressing, Ruben is depressing. Thank you so much. I, I gotta tell you, there are literally a million other wasteful spending items that we can cut. President Trump and I will not lay a finger on your social security, you have my word. And when, when you look at the character of Ruben Gallego, he's not a good guy. He's not a good guy. I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty strong woman. My daughter kind of laid it out. I have a soft side. And I, you know, I think, I think a lot of moms, and how many of you are moms out there? Okay, we're strong. We protect our babies, right? We're the mama bears. But we have had that vulnerable moment in those final weeks of pregnancy, right? We're, we're, we're a couple weeks away from delivering our baby, and we're a little bit vulnerable. Ruben Gallego walked out on his wife days before she gave birth to their first poor baby. He walked out on her, served her divorce papers, and ran off with a DC lobbyist. This guy is not a good guy. If he's willing to walk out on his family, he will walk out on the voters of this great state. We cannot let that man in the US Senate. I know, it's shocking. He's an open border zealot against the border wall. He voted to give illegals that poured into this country during the Biden invasion not only asylum, but he wants them to be able to vote in this next election. No, Ruben. Thank you. Latinos for Kerry, thank you. Not only. Love you. 25% of our state. 25% of this great state are Hispanics. They are Latinos. They work hard. They care about their family. They care about their faith. They want their children to get a proper education. I always joke, 25% of Arizona is Latino. 75% of my family is Latino. My husband and children are Latino. That's right. Latinos want safe streets. Latinos want a secure border. Latinos want their kids to get a proper education, and they want to know that if they work hard, they will have access and uh, access to the America dream, and they will under President Trump, I can assure you of that. So, with President Trump in the White House, we will finish the wall. 
think we're ready for that. We will secure the border, we will take down the cartels, and we will end the scourge of fentanyl that's killing an entire generation. I see a mama bear over there holding her little, her little guy. He's falling asleep and she's just rocking him in her arms. This is why we're in it. This is why she's standing there, guys. We're about to lose this country. We have three and a half months to save this country. And damn it, I'm willing to do everything in my power to save it. Are you? I know she is. I'm just like you. I, I love this country. I love America. Ruben voted to send $260 billion over to Ukraine. I'm never going to do that. I will never, ever sell out this country like some of these politicians have done. We're not sending our money over there. Guys, I know, I mean, we could sit here all day and talk about the problems. We could talk about how big these problems are. How many of you wake up at three or four in the morning and you just go, oh, geez, what's coming at us tomorrow? I'm not the only one, I know that. These problems are massive, but the solutions are actually really simple, believe it or not. It's called common sense, right? It's common sense. So, so we can solve these problems with America First policies. That's the way we do it. President Trump showed us how to do it in that first term. He solved those problems. He had one hand tied behind his back. He had the swamp coming after him. And in that first term, he solved so many problems. Imagine what he can do if he has backup in the second term in DC. We're gonna solve it all. We're gonna stop the Biden invasion. We're gonna bring back the Trump economy. How about we replace indoctrination with a real education? Is that okay, Mama? It's all common sense. We can solve these problems, and frankly, we must solve these problems for our children. That's what the that is what the future is about. Even if you don't have kids, it's the children that are our future. And we need you in this fight with us. We in this room and in this country have the most powerful weapon out there. Do you know what that is? Our voice. Our voice. Do you know how powerful our voice is? That's why they're trying to silence us. 300 million voices is far more powerful than five corrupt corporate media giants. And we got to start speaking out because these people in the back of the room are the biggest biggest problem. The people who they work for are the biggest threat to this country. We're in an information war right now and if we don't speak out against the lies and the false narrative that they are pushing, we will lose our country. How many of you are willing to speak out, ruffle feathers and make a difference? How many of you are ready to turn off the fake news altogether? How many of you have already turned off the fake news? I thought so. And you know the reason why that we have that powerful weapon, our voice, is because of the First Amendment. Now I know it's kind of hanging by a thread. We still have the Bill of Rights, it's hanging by a thread. But it was 250 years ago that a small group of incredibly strong men knew that there were inalienable rights that were granted to them, not by any man, but from God above. Inalienable rights. And 250 years ago, they no longer wanted to be the subjects of a king named King George. They wanted to be free men and women, just like we do. And I will tell you what, for them, because of them, and for them, America was just an idea. For all of us, America has been a reality. And it is up to us to ensure that America does not become a memory. So critical, guys. Critical. I don't want that sleeping boy over there to just hear stories from his mom about the good old days when America was free. I want him to enjoy the freedom of this country. And I will tell you this, God placed every single one of those men 250 go years ago right where they needed to be. And he placed us here right now for the reason we're going to save this country. <laughs> the
The America First movement is the movement for the forgotten men and women. The new Republican Party is the party of common sense, and we welcome anybody who wants safety, security, prosperity, and freedom. Welcome to the Republican Party. It's going to take all of us Arizonans coming together to save this great nation. From Bullhead City to Window Rock, Yuma to Tombstone, Page down to Nogales. From Winslow, we got a Nogales girl over here. From Winslow to Wickenburg and Phoenix, up to the cool pines of Flagstaff. We Arizonans are coming together to save this state and save America. Right? I feel like there's something happening here. Have you guys felt it lately? I, there's definitely something happening here, but there's something happening in Arizona. Look at these numbers tonight. Look who won these races tonight. There's something happening here in America right now. There's something happening in the world right now. Look at Venezuela. Look at the people. Look at humanity coming together. When we win the U.S. Senate seat, we will make America safe again. How about this? We will make Arizona affordable again. And guess what? We're going to make Arizona grand again. I'm ready for it. God bless every single one of you who came out and voted for me. God bless Arizona. God bless the United States of America. I love you guys. Let's go on and win November 5th and save our country. I love you. Team, come up here. Can my team who helped us win this race tonight come up here? They're the greatest team in all of politics because guess what? They're not a bunch of Washington, D.C. politicos. They're just Arizonans who love this state. Bring up my team. I want everybody who helped us win this race to come on up. Alicia, we got Mama Bears over here. Nick, I love you. Lisa, my God, the first person I ever met coming to Arizona. Aren't you glad that we met? 1,000%. We're going to save this state. You all met Alex. Oh, my God. My favorite guy in the whole world, Colton. Grew up in a trailer park in West Texas, and he loves America. JT, our newest member. Oh, my God, the Mama Bear Club. I love you guys. Mitch, how are you? Alicia, how are you? Oh, it's so good to see all you guys. Guys, it's going to take all of us. We're all one big team. We're all one big team, and we're going to come together. Let's start talking to our neighbors, even if they're Democrats. We want them in this fight. We're going to save America. I love you guys so much. Thank you.